Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sew the short sleeve cuffs for the Lou Box Dress 1 pattern. If you're not familiar, this is a pattern that I released a few years ago and then recently updated to um, expand the size range. So it works together with the Lou Box Top and the Lou Box Dress 1. I'm wearing the Lou Box Dress 1. I mean the youth, yeah. So the Lou Box Dress 1, Lou Box Dress 2, Lou Box Top, they all mix together. Um, the pattern pieces can be swapped around for a lot of different options. I'm wearing the Lou Box Dress 1 right now, and this is the version with elbow sleeves and cuffs. And then in today's video, I'm going to show you how to sew the short cuff sleeves. And on this example, this is actually the body of the Lou Box Dress 2, which has a gathered elastic waistband. So just an example of how you can really hack these three patterns together. They're really versatile and really fun, easy to sew. Um, these fabrics are also available in my shop. I especially selected them because they work really well with these patterns. So the tricky thing about these short little cuffs is that the cuff is smaller than the body. So it can be a little bit tricky just to make sure you get it sewn in there without any wrinkles. So in this video, I'm going to give you all my tips and tricks to make sure you have a really smooth, wrinkle-free cuff insertion. Let's get started. So here I have the short cuff sleeve and I have folded it right sides together and then pinned this short end. So here we have, it's kind of this little like zigzag shape and these short pieces are going to be the seam allowance that attaches to the top. So I'm going to sew with a straight stitch and a one half inch seam allowance. If you're using a knit fabric, you'll want to use a stretch stitch or a zigzag. You want to do a little bit of a back stitch. Okay. And then this is probably just the trickiest part. You want to get as close to um, your one half inch mark here. And you can mark this with a pen or something before you sew, but I just eyeball it. So you lift and pivot and then stitch down. And we're going to pivot again. One more. So I kind of guess and then lift my presser foot and turn it around and see if I got it right. So that looks good enough to me. And keep going a little bit. Try one more. Lift and pivot. That's pretty good. Um, I didn't do the greatest job cutting this, so it's a little uneven, but that's okay. Okay. Okay, so we have this cut, and actually here you might be able to see the stitching better because I have a different color thread in the bobbin. So now you want to take your scissors, and at this interior point, you want to clip through all the, but don't clip the stitching line. So you want to have that little bit and you can even trim away a little bit of the fabric. And then you want to do the same at these outer corners. So just trim away a little triangle. So you can see we've trimmed this and then you want to take it to your pressing station and press these seams open. And this is what it should look like with the seams pressed open. So after you press the seams open, you want to fold it with your wrong sides together and match up those long raw edges and press it again. 
And I have an example already done. So let's look at that. Here's this pressed edge. So this is going to be the end of your sleeve and you can see it's nice and sharply pressed. And because this fabric's a little challenging to handle, I've put some pins in to keep it together along that long raw, long raw edge. So these pins are holding it together and I'm gonna baste it. And I don't usually do this if I'm working with a fabric that is less wobbly, but this rayon is a little wobbly. So I'm gonna baste just a little bit um, less than one half of an inch. can be really helpful for a lot of projects um, but sometimes I skip it just do what you feel like needs to be done okay so that's basted and now we want to sew this onto our top so here this is our sleeve this is the shoulder this is where the shoulder seam is going to match up, and then down here is the underarm. So here I have my top, and it's right side out, and I'm going to put my little cuff over the top of the armhole. So I'm going to match up the pin with the shoulder seam, and then pin that together, and then Bring this down and match up the seam and the cuff with the seam of our underarm on the top. And then you can just add some more pins in here to keep those raw edges together. this with the top on the outside so that I can stitch it with the top next to the feed dogs. The way that this is designed, it these two pattern pieces will match up exactly along the seam line, but it will seem like the top is too big. So the feed dogs are going to help us kind of ease in the top to fit the cuff. So after you stitch it, there should be no pleats or puckers in the top and it should fit exactly and anytime you have one piece of fabric that needs to be eased into another like if um, something seems a little bit bigger than another piece you want to put that bigger one on the bottom and let the feed dogs help you ease it in looks really good no puckers um, the only thing is at our seam allowance so this often happens when you have a seam allowance on the underside next to the feed dog so you can kind of get bunched up so I will just unpick that and re-sew it so I think I will turn my top um, the other way out and stitch from the other side so I make sure that I get my seam allowance really nice and flat. Okay. So this is definitely a little bit longer way to go, but you're gonna have a really nice finish with no puckers. So here you can kind of take a look. Here it is right side out. Fits in perfectly. Because I just unpicked this, I'm gonna put some pins back in to hold that seam allowance where I want it. So I've changed my machine to have a regular stitch length. And now we are going to stitch over that basting line that we just did. And I 
I'm really happy that I decided to baste that first time. Um, because sometimes, you know, you don't want to baste because it's going to take extra time, but in the end, it means you're going to have spent less time with your seam ripper. So you can kind of see on this side, it's a lot harder to stitch with the top on the top and the cuff on the bottom because the top is getting bigger as we go away from the seam line. So you have to like handle that fabric a little bit more and get it flat in there. So it definitely fits together at the seam line. It just takes a little more um, manipulating. So I definitely recommend stitching with the top next to the feed dogs. Okay. And a little bit of back stitch. Okay. All right. So to finish this off, we're just going to You'll want to use a serger or a zigzag stitch to finish this seam and then you will press that seam towards the top. So here is how I serge the raw edge. I've turned the knife on and I'm just going to cut a little tiny bit just to get rid of those extra threads. just go back over where you started stitching and then veer off trim it and then I just tie it in a knot and cut it you could also thread these threads through a needle and then slip it through the stitches so just trim and then that's all done now you just want to press the seam allowance towards the top a little um, sleeve board or tailor's ham will help you get in there and um, be able to access these narrow areas. Well, I hope that video was helpful for you. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And in the show notes, I will put a link to the blog post. There may be additional tips there in case I forgot anything in the video, as well as links to the Lou box dress sew along, links to the fabrics, and links to the patterns. Lots of good stuff in the show notes. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all my future tips, tutorials, and pattern releases. Happy sewing!